Hey, yo, what's up? This is Hassan. So shout out to TJ Got Kicks 89. So What's up everybody? TJ Got Kicks 89 here back with another video. Today we're talking about an 180 ringgit pickup of mine. This is the Foot Locker exclusive Air Max TL. Now in this short video that I hope to be doing for you guys, I will just go over through the nostalgia of of this shoe. Uh, me growing up around the early 2000s and just looking at this shoe blow up the, the technology and why it didn't really work out. Um, and hopefully give you guys a little bit of insight on what makes this shoe such a classic. The Nike Shocks Total or Nike Shocks TL was an idea of Nike to use what was called mechanical uh, cushioning. It was an idea that was initiated in 1984. I believe Bruce Kilgore took like the kill shot or daybreak or something like that, put it on like a spring plate. You guys can Google that photo, but put it on a spring plate and he said that it was supposed to do something in terms of alleviating pressure on your joints and it's supposed to have bounce back. Um, in 2021 right now there are so many other foams that provide the same idea and result as the shocks did back in the day. Obviously we know that this isn't one of the best cushionings. Um, even Adidas tried to copy it with their spring blade uh, technology. But this was one of Nike's most highly coveted and most gimmicked uh, cushioning system. It's built up of these polyurethane. Sorry, focus. Focus. Okay. It's built up of these polyurethane pillars here running all along. And the best part about the TL is that it's obviously full length shocks. So you're not, you're not going to be escaping from shocks. You get shocks from heel to forefoot. But these polyurethane pillars have uh, basically these pillars contain polyurethane, and there's two there's two um, um, I, I think they call them like spring plates or reaction plates. Basic oh moderator plates that's what they're called. There's two moderator plates. The first one being up here, uh, which you can see kind of also runs full length as well, and there's another moderator plate down there. It being black, you can't really see, but I hope you can see it. Um, with my pink shirt backing it up but there's a moderator plate there so what that does is it kind of creates two hard surfaces for the polyurethane to hopefully compress and decompress that was the idea and that was the the boing behind uh, Nike's shocks cushioning now I could go on about how this shoe was a uh, I don't really want to say a, a breakthrough in design but yes it was a breakthrough in design at one time because Nike had already had their their air cushioning system which encompassed the the Air Max units the Zoom Air units and you've got the Air Zoom units um, and they basically wanted to have the next cushioning gimmick or idea so they came up with this and it I think it started with the Shox R4 I believe which was basically um, you had it was a double lasted midsole and you had four shocks cushioning pillars in the back which is the name R4 um, that was one of the first models obviously they, they, they expanded obviously until this I think this was the pinnacle of the the shocks system where they tried to implement it full length there it was also used in basketball lines Gary Payton most famously oh, Gary Payton most famously had a an, a an advertisement with Nike where he jumped out the gym and it had a boing um, background sound to it. Vince Carter famously also dunked on whoever that poor soul was in the 2004 Olympics in his Shocks uh, VC. He also had a, a, a really big line of Shocks footwear with uh, Nike um, what else can we say well let's just go about like how the nostalgia was when I first looked at the shoe back in the day 
So back in the day, this shoe, I think I saw the Shox R4 first when I was going to the skateboard park in Mid Valley. I'm, I'm taking you guys back really far right now. But going in to buy some skateboard parts from Ruffy, if you remember, there was a skate shop called Ruffy. There was a series of skate shop in Mid Valley, actually, even where A&W now is, it used to be... Damn, I can't remember, but... 90s kids, you know me. 90s, 90s skater kids in Malaysia, you guys know me. So, saw this shoe next to a kid that was wearing a pair of Rowley XLTs. And I thought this was one of the craziest inventions ever. Like, springs on shoes wasn't really... Was, was only a far-fetched idea until this shoe came about. Nike made this happen. Nike made freaking springs for our shoes. Although it didn't compress well, it, this does not age well over time, trust me. Once the polyurethane inside here wears out, you're gonna have nothing. Nothing on your heel, nothing on your forefoot. So I better get, <laughs> I better get to wearing these sometime soon. So it was, I think the idea of how um, orthotics was taken so far ahead of its time first it was the air and then it was the the eva pillars now we have boost you have micro g you have charged all foams that re that that compress and decompress react to heat temperature the amount of pressure applied to it we've come so far in terms of technology i'm going off on a tangent because of my obsession with and and my passion towards um orthotics or the, the biomechanics basically the biomechanics of the human foot because I feel like it's uh, we use our feet every day so we should be able to use technology to its advantage and basically enhance performance and also uh, make our lives daily lives a lot more comfortable so this shoe the design aspect is basically somewhat similar to the Air Max Plus which is why I like it so you've got these TPU strands these TPU strands here in the in the midfoot and also in the forefoot that basically act as uh, a containment unit towards the shoe. You've got this really nice um, velvety material swoosh here, stitched in with the uh, yellow bordering around. In the forefoot, as you can see, like it's a really narrow shoe, but in the forefoot you can see some reflective bits with the mesh. You've got that same TPU thing going all around. You've got th 3M also on this, um, what's this? You've also got 3M here on the lace hole, the top lace hole, first lace hole. Going up top and 90s kids will also love this. It's like the, the jewel design or like the plasticky design of footwear back in the day. So you've got the Shox logo right there on the top of the tongue. Nike Shox writing right over there. In the inside, you've got Nike Shox sock liner, a standard black mesh sock liner. Same on the tongue and on the back. Sorry if the color adjustment is crazy, guys. Shox logo, and this part is also 3M reflective. Um, you've got the same material that you see on the swoosh being used right here on the quarter panels. Shocks midsole, let's really not talk too much about that, but um, this was a design aspect that Nike had for the Shocks TL, exclusively for the Shocks TL moderator plates, where I always thought it was exposed foam, but apparently it's just the same velvety material that you see here on the side being used here, just in a different color. Um, a little bit closer look on the shock system itself. So you can see one, two, three, I lost count. We've got like this big ass shocks uh, pillar right there, drop in the middle, and it goes around the entire shoe. Bigger on the 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 instep, obviously to create a little bit more uh, stability and cushioning uh, and impact protection, obviously. The sole, super 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 aggressive outsole. This looks like like hiking lugs for runners back in the day. <laughs> People used to run in this shit, man. <laughs> How could they? I don't know. I'm actually, I should actually try that out. I'm gonna try and run in the Shox TL because I've never. I I've ran in the Air Max Plus. Obviously, I'm I'm a dumb motherfucker, so I run in anything old school just to kind of see how it compares to nowadays. I love running in the Ultra Boost, so 
this should be a trip this should be an experience to, to wear this is the outsole um, this um, circular design which is supposed to uh, mimic impact disbursement in the heel you've got this see-through plate right here to show you the shocks logo again and you've got the I think this was waffle uh, inspired obviously Nike built on the waffle sole design some say Van Doren did it first rest in peace to Van Doren but um, it was one of the most efficient ways to make uh, traction patterns back in the day right so you got it going all around this is aggressive it's not as thick as it should be slightly shallow but should do the job really really well so that takes care of the review of the nike shocks tl or the nike shocks total full length shocks shoe um not really one of the best cushioning systems but a really good nike gimmick for what it was at this time very happy to be able to purchase this at less than a hundred less than 200 ringgit obviously this retailed for about 739 here in Foot Locker in Malaysia this is the Foot Locker exclusive colorway if you guys know me I love my Air Max Plus I love all three original colorways all of the colorways actually and this is the colorway that strikes home closest to the Air Max Plus and it is a good alternative to the Air Max Plus in terms of color not cu not cushioning but just the, the the overall vibe and swag that this shoe has um, let me know if you guys will be picking up a pair of this shoe I hopefully will be looking to buy more uh, cheap cheap pickups like this um, over time balling on a budget for life man so that takes care of the review of the Air, Ma uh, the Air Max the Nike Shocks Total or the Nike Shocks TL in the Sunset colorway TJ got Kicks 89 Nike Shocks Boing!